Well, I want to thank you for joining us from Canada today, and I'd like to hand the show to you. Thank you, Raz, and thank you everybody for joining today. Um, as Raz mentioned, I'm Microsoft Business Application MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer, also a Principal Solution Architect uh, working in a partner based in Canada. So with this, I would like to explain you more about how a real time journey in customers in Dynamic 6 by marketing will work and let's get started. I'm going to talk about a quick introduction of what is Dynamic 6 by marketing. I'm pretty sure many of you, if you are attending a couple of sessions, we have back to back session related to marketing, which we already talked about what the capabilities we already have. But I just want to don't spend too much of time. Just want to explain you what it means by the marketing application in the different industry. What's the difference between outbound and real time marketing? That's but so much of confusion around we have in the market uh, during my recent implementation customer was not aware of which one to use because they see value in both the marketing journeys. So I'm going to show about like talk about what the difference of these two journey and what to use when. I'm going to then focus on the capability side of the real time marketing journeys and the application module side. Then I will do a quick demo and then I'm going to talk about uh, what are the uh, new upcoming features and what uh, which uh, application side or module to use based on the uh, your requirement needs. So without further ado, I would like to start the session with the experience side. So before we deep dive into the marketing introduction side, let's talk about the experience. So what is a customer experience looks like and how we can improve our customer experience at this point of time. So as we because customer experience uh, talks about and whatever we are doing for marketing real time journey outbound marketing and all these things including the customer inside is just focus on the customer experience side so how we can improve the customer experience so at this time stay connected with your customer have been more important to listen you need to understand what they're responding and what their needs are at any point of time and provide them the right information at the right time and at the right place Customers are more like an individual and you can expect how to treat them as such. They can do a business with the companies they understand with them. So it talks about how we can, uh, how a customer manage and how they learn and shop engage in another way. It's 100% depend on uh, what kind of personalized experience that your company is providing when it comes to branding and how you're engaging. So when it comes to real-time marketing, that's the very focused area we are going to talk discuss today. So it provides a personalized experience uh, that your customers are engaging with your brand. And so you can provide the right experience and right information uh, at the right point of time to, the, to your customers. So before we deep dive into the real time side, let's talk about some of the customer loyalty uh, numbers given here. So it's very clear at this point of time, changing the customer behavior. It's shifting from offline to online. So with the pandemic, you can see, even you can take your code on your experience and example, how exactly you, the kind of business you are doing a couple of years back and now, it's make and shift to a more complex uh, shift is happening at this point of time. So this show how the customer, customer loyalty is moving or appending with the pandemics. So as suggested here, 65% of consumer intended to continue their shopping shopping uh, behavior after the pandemic. That's given from the McKinsey point of view and how we can improve and escalate uh, escalate uh, uh, on, on the uh, behavior side uh, from the marketing application. And approximately 60% of the CMOs expect moderate to severe cut of their marketing uh, technology budget. So if if you are planning to reduce the budgets, how much impact we can see in the market in the coming months uh, on the on the application side. So I'm going to talk about these two numbers in the given slide. So when it comes to improving the customer experience, it's a key plan for the new strategy that offer a tangible benefits. So increasing a revenue by 10 to 20%. It also provides a reduction in uh, in um, in of cost of the marketing, which is reduced by 15 to 20 percent coming from, you can say, saving uh, from the top of your funnel that you spend on the ad or you can spend on the third party ad, 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 ads uh, that you uh, want to use and uh, want to spend on your customers. You are also spending and saving on wasted of IT, IT spend. Uh, many marketers speaks 
at any given time they're using best of the breed system to increase the integration cost. It will also increase the integration cost eventually, and which means extra effort for your make the data consistent throughout the application so you can board any brand such as Salesforce or Microsoft 365. It required a significant amount of execution cost and uh, and bring the data together to give you the more relevant and uh, in make sense sense policies. Also, when it comes to customer advocacy score, uh, an improve, improvement uh, to, uh, of 20 to 40 percent, which it will term, drive a long term benefits for your customers. So these are the sources you can go to BCG for customer journey uh, reports and you can uh, look for the more information given here. Now how these numbers which we talked about increasing the revenue, reducing the cost of IT and uh, improve your uh, customer advocacy score from 20 to 40, how we can achieve this. So with this, we are going to talk about some of the technology behind the marketing to evolve. So from the, if I talk about marketing 1.0, in the past we were using mass communication. We are sending automation um, at a scale any given time. We are advertising to many people as possible just spreading the word, making noise and just sending the random things. And then what people do, they simply click on ad blocker, they remove and subscribe from the list ch channel because you're sending any kind of random emails from the mass communication and you're not not aware of what kind of uh, what kind of brands actually they prefer, what is their requirements are. And then we talked about the mark. Um, the, then we have is, uh, a couple of years back, there was a marketing campaign 2.0 was came, which talks about the segmented list. So we have drive the segmented campaigns. We identify who our target audience are, and then we, based on the target audience, we uh, we try to uh, contact them with the, the right information that looking for uh, using various channels like email, social media, an application like push notification, SMS and all, right? And with, with more personalized, more and more personalized information that uh, customer was looking for. Now we are on the 3.0 customer experience where we are going to talk about the real time journey and how we can a journey can be used with based on the event based. So instead of you are sending something to the customer based on, let's say you have you got a demand or a segmented target audience from uh, two years back data. That is something very old because the the kind of uh, the, the things are changing very fast. It's more like a moments based marketing which we used in the term. That is something we can use with the real time marketing and using the event based journeys. So let's say I'm going to take an example. Um, when you enter to a store and we connect to a Wi Fi of a store, it will automatically take your information. Like when you connect to the sco store's Wi Fi, let's say electronic store or any kind of store you visited uh, last week, it will, when you connect to the Wi Fi, that is a trigger point. That is an event or trigger point for a customer. Uh, for a for a marketing application to start a customer journey for you, so that is something. It's a trigger, and then based on the kind of action and your uh, steps in the journey, it will create a end to end experience for you. I'm going to show in the demo also in a couple of slides how those journey will looks like. So this is something we talked about in the industry perspective. Let's talk about how a dynamic 365 can provide all these application side and things uh, which we are looking for. So before we deep dive into the discussion, let's talk about what is a marketing application in Dynamics, not as a industry application, but it just a, it talks about the Dynamics, the sexual marketing application. It elevates a customer experience, allow you to orchestrate personalized journey, also provides a various touch points at any given time to strengthen your customer relationship and loyalty. The application also seamlessly work with this marketing dynamic this express sales, customer insights, teams, and any other uh, M365 products. It will also provide a very faster decision making using the power of AI. So what those means are, when it comes to marketing, it talks about the journey. It's one of the core, or I would say, backbone of any customers is using a marketing application because of the journey. They want to give a automate uh, end to end experience best experience to their customers. So that's why they are using a customer journey kind of application, like a, a module in within the marketing. Now, what's the use of a marketing application which is not connected to a sales? Like, what's the next step of marketing? You market your product so you can generate a sales and revenue at the end of the day, right? That's that's the intent of the, uh, in, in nutshell. 
Now, when you market your product, and it's, it's that's why it's very seamlessly connected with the sales application. So you generate a lead, and then you nurture a lead uh, at any given time in the marketing application, and then based on some score, there is a lot of different functionality on the scoring and other nurturing lead side uh, within the, the dynamic the six point marketing application. And then you connect this to the sales. You pass on the information to sales, and then sales will go ahead and take the ownership of the lead, and then they will nurture to qualify to make an opportunity, send a quote, or if it's a field service or project operation, depend on the type of uh, lead is generated, then you can distribute to the among the various module of the dynamic assessed by customer engagement applications. Right, so that's the entry point of uh, uh, any any lead. Then once the lead is generated, then it will distribute uh, as, as needed. Now, what's, what's the use of a customer insights here? Now, we talked about in 2.0 marketing, there's something called like segmentation, right? So how we can improve the segmentation instead of we uh, talked about like we are looking for segmentation, show me list of all the customer who are turning 18 so we can sell, sell a perfume to them, right? I'm just taking some random example. Uh, this is just more like a static type of uh, segmentation or dynamic segmentation, which will. But this is something based on some information which we already have about the customer, right? Uh, but let's talk about based on activity. Instead of saying a customer who is turning 18 next week or next month uh, or sometime next quarter, something like that, we say anybody who attended my event or interacted and provides, let's say, higher score based on the some model which we define in the customer side, put them in the segmentation. So this is more like an engagement based, uh, which we used in the engagement based marketing. So instead of more like a static, you are more like to get the data who is more engaging and want to, uh, so you can target them and more easily and make a hot lead uh, in your application, right? So that's a, one of the ways you can create the information and in the customer insights. Uh, it creates in a sense, it will pull the data from various sources and it will then eventually create the data and extract and transact and create a profile of 360 degree view of customers. You can then pull those information and then create a, a segmentation within that marketing tool. And then you can use the segmentation to use in the real time journey and so and so forth. Right. And then we have the marketing and other application uh, connected for, for the further use. Uh, so we can send emails and send some uh, notification on the team side. Okay. So with this, um, if I talk, go back to the marketing discussion again, we have two set of application and modules right now. Uh, first is the real-time marketing and second is outbound marketing. Some of the components of these two modules are connected. Some of those are not connected. So what is mean by this statement? It means that some modules, some part of the real-time marketing and the customer outbound marketing uh, uh, data is shared between that application, like these two modules within that Microsoft marketing app, and something is not shared. So now you say why if this two modules within that one module called marketing application, right? Yes, but this some of the functionality of the real time marketing and outbound marketing at best separate and they are disconnected at, at this point of time. In future, something it's coming up like I will, I will show you in the roadmap how it looks like in the end of the presentation, um, how those functionality will cover. So if I talk about the real time marketing and outbound marketing feature list um, in a shell, and then we have the something it's merge. So let's start what is uh, common elements in both the application. So we have segment based email marketing automation. Both the marketing journey or a module support the segment based journeys, seg segment based email marketing. So email marketing in a sense, they are sending an email based on segmentation. Yes, that's support in outbound and real time. Basic content personalization or using a dynamic content that support in both the application side both the module technically basic analytics comes in both the both the modules and consent management comes in both the modules so without consent management and outbound or real time marketing system will not send any notification to the customer either it's sms push notification or emails which we are discussing now now if i start from outbound marketing which provides a very specific feature like social media posting uh, you can connect with various social media uh, channels and you can post from there you can use the forms and landing pages. So let's say when a new upcoming event is coming up, you want to create a landing page and registration form, then you can design it here in the event management or uh, landing page and connect to the event management. So when somebody 
register for your event, it automatically creates a, a attendee of that event and contact record inside your marketing application. And then eventually you convert this to a lead, grow a lead, and then um, pro sell your products or services. Then we have a lead management. So this lead management is very similar to sales application, but it's, this is more focused towards the marketing, like how to nurture a lead to grow a score and so we can uh, we can hand off the lead to sales. Then we have something called subscription management. So here we have the subscription list to be managed. So let's say when you when you go to when you're receiving an email, let's say from clothing store and you like to um, change your subscription, like a subscription in a sense, how you subscribe from the email ID, like subscription model or uh, subscription center. So when you click on it, it will give you some opportunity to opt out or opt in from the various subscription list you already selected. So let's say do not send me uh, bulk email, but send me discounted emails on the seasonal email. That's something like that. So you can choose your own list of subscription you like to uh, go with the company. So that's a subscription management is very easily and perfectly work with the outbound marketing. And at the last, we have the lead scoring or grading. So based on certain action a customer is doing, it will generate a score and assign to lead. So you can um, so you can not only nurture the lead, but assign a lead once the score hit to a threshold to the sales application, like uh, convert a lead from sales to marketing. Convert in the sense it's an assignment, it's not technically a, uh, it's a conversion, it's a qualification kind of thing, right? And then we have the real-time marketing. In the real-time marketing, we have a customer journey, uh, which oh, we also have a customer journey in Outbound, which is missing point, uh, but we have a customer journey in Outbound, uh, which works perfectly. And then we have a, in the real-time, we have a customer journey, which works with more advanced features. I'm going to show you, uh, let's say, uh, it will work with segmentation, like Outbound marketing works. It will also work with event-based journey, which we talked about marketing and marketing 3.0, right? Um, and then we have a mobile messaging which talks about and uh, provides a channel for, for us to uh, send SMS and push notification. And then we can personalize your content with dynamic content and, uh, and journey side. You can scale this say to a higher stand using the Power Automate. So let's say you want to create any activity um, uh, when you're working with the customer journey, you can scale with Power Automate or connect with um, a custom channel which is in the roadmap. Uh, and uh, which we already have in the outbound marketing. And then last, we have the real-time analytics. So it provides you very rich in, uh, analytics on the conversion side. So let's say in the outbound marketing, it will not give you conversion side of uh, real-time analytics on the journey, but in the, uh, sorry, outbound, but in the real-time analytics, real-time journey, it provides you very rich, uh, rich data analytics, uh, how much of the conversion and goals and other things. Okay, so these are the two difference between the uh, two separate uh, modules we have within that marketing application. So let's talk about a quick option on the on the outbound marketing side. It provides, as I mentioned, email marketing, customer journey, lead scoring, marketing pages, and social media. You can turn your prospect into a lead and have more faster. So you can create a lead here, if qualify a hotter lead uh, with the automated lead scoring. So let's say when you create a lead, the lead score is 10. And based on some model you define, the lead score reached to 70. And you decide a threshold. When a lead, uh, lead score reached to 70, automatically assign a lead to the sales team. So that's uh, one of the conversion of uh, lead from marketing to sales. It's a handoff process more like. You can leverage the power of social media. You can connect, convert, and capture a lead from a LinkedIn using the LinkedIn lead gen form application side. Uh, uh, and it's also provide a uh, other link social media uh, connections with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Out of the box, it will not provide you capability to capture a lead directly from there, but with using some power automate and some logic, you can reach to that point. I did for many customers where we put a post on the social media and they, based on the likes and other thing, a lead was capturing in, within the tool. But we need to do uh, some configuration around it. And then at the last, it will provide a, a get feedback from a uh, with a customer voice. So customer voice, it will work. And as we know, customer voice is an enterprise level uh, feedback management tool. Uh, so you can not only take a feedback of your recent events, you can take a feedback on how your service, uh, customer service worked, how your agents are working and anything, any kind of feedback uh, within the marketing tool outside the marketing application. Also, one more thing, uh, customer voice can work with both the journeys, 
outbound marketing or with real time marketing journey. So it's just a it's just a technically a link which we are providing and embedding within the tool. Uh, something like instead of learn more, you, you can say um, provide a survey or give me your feedback, something like that. When you click on it, it will open a survey. It can be open a survey from outbound or real time both the journeys. Couple of things I think it's uh, already covered, but I just want to make sure that is uh, you should aware of it um, to make an edit uh, like before we go to the edit. When you create any record in market marketing, it will in the draft stage. This means you are actively working on it. Once you click on it and it, it, it will check the errors, you can click on the check for errors and then it will go live. Go live means you are on the active state. It means you're either a customer journey or email marketing or anything which you make as live is, is in the use. Because you are sending an information to your customer, it is very important for us to make sure that we are due to due diligence to sending any information randomly to the customer outside the application side and the organization. So now let's say you are in the live state. You want to edit something. You can click on the command bar and you can edit the live uh, customer journey within the live mode. It will not it will not stop sending email to customers. It will keep sending an email because it's in the live state. Editable live. If you stop and click on the stop, then it will stop processing and stop sending email to your customers as part of the journey. So let's say you have 1000 customer, you start the journey and within a couple of hours, you realize you need to make some changes in the journey. You click on edit, still it keeps sending the emails. But when you at the moment when you hit the stop, it will stop sending and the journey will process stop uh, processing the emails or any steps uh, uh, for the contacts. So how the view journey of the live journey looks like, it will show you this is the outbound journey. And uh, that's the view of it. It will show you how many processing and each stages. So when you have multiple stages in the journey, let's say sending an email and then checkbox here just to check whether they open an email, any type of if else condition you can add, then wait for it. And then you can add various uh, section here, right? Uh, various various uh, items in, the, in, this, in this journey. So for each of the step, it will show out of let's say 100 contacts started uh, we have in the segment or from the subscription list first job. And then out of 100, how many emails are processed, sent successfully or blocked? How many emails are open? And then it will show you each of the score and each of the stages, how many people are qualifying and then uh, move to the next next stage. Let's talk about uh, a real time journey side because that's the intent of uh, today's session. Extension of existing outbound marketing capability. We have something called real time marketing journey or real time marketing, which we introduced a couple of months back. You can use segment directly from outbound marketing to dynamic the 65 customer insights. Uh, that's uh, something you can use very, very uh, seamlessly. You can also use mobile channels such as text sending text SMS or text messages or push notification, which was not a uh, which was not uh, part of out of the box standard functionality of outbound marketing. You can also use event triggered to the journey. So let's say, as I mentioned, connecting to a Wi-Fi or abandoned cart. I recently worked with a for an e-commerce company, and then uh, the customer wants if a cart is not completed or the car shopping cart was added, like if you had a product for next six hours and if you have not finished in six hours, send a notification to the customer who whose cart is this, like who added the product or in the in the, in the shopping cart and then we'll wait for it. And the goal is to finish the customer, like finish the purchase. So that's the goal of the journey. Uh, and then we design a journey hole in a, in a sh abandoned shopping cart way. So once the shopping cart product is added, they are part of the journey. And then we'll wait for uh, next six hours. And then after six hours, we are sending in reminders, uh, sending some notification if check whether they're opening an email, opening that SMS or not, or something like that, right? So we send some notification. After some time, we start sending discounts also because maybe customers are not interested because it's more than eight hours now, right? So this kind of thing, you can define more intelligent journeys you can define and create uh, from the tool. The real time uh, it also that's a that's a quick view of the journey which is like a older screenshot. I'm going to show you how the new journey uh, UI looks like, but it'll show you how much the goal reach as I mentioned goal is a word a couple of minutes before. So this works for a goal actually goal in a sense you, you can define um, how much. So let's say you are sending reach out reaching out to 1000 contacts and your goal is if it's more than 80% then I think we are good. 
um, uh, then how much people are participating in the in the journey. So you can define a goal and you can see how much the goal is progressing at any, any given time. Um, a customer can respond respond action in real time. You can see the responded uh, action from a customer in real time. This means you can uh, because that's a real time event based journey, so you can see at any moment uh, that, that matter for the real time side. Hyper personalized your messaging. You can personalize your message with dynamic text images with for flexible data sources. So this means you can not only in the dynamic content on outbound marketing, also we personalize the text with the uh, uh, with the dynamic content. So let's say when you're sending an email, you have 10 brands. Let's say like take an example and you don't want to run 10 different type of email for the same type of content, uh, but with different logo image and links and all. Uh, you don't want to create 10 separate emails and 10 separate journeys. So instead of doing creating uh, multiple separate records, you can create a one record as email marketing as uh, email uh, email campaign marketing or email record, you can say, and then you can use the personalized or dynamic content there. And you can use dynamic content for each of different logos. So when a member or a customer uh, or a contact prospect, whatever you call it, received an email. If I received an email, I will see the information of brand one. If you received, you will see the information related to brand two. So this will be personalized or customized or dynamic content change will based on the uh, person who has received this email. Uh, so those are the sub some option. We have extended functionality in the real time marketing is already added. And then we have connect with the customer on channel that you use the most. So uh, this this is something very good feature. When I was working for a healthcare company, they were using. Uh, they were not sure which which uh, channel to use. So let's say when you send an email to them, I take an example here. When you send an email here, and you wait for two days, let's say, and customer didn't respond to that email and they didn't open it, and you realized because you have the split of the uh, information uh, within the journey, and then you identify. A, they have not opened an email from last two days. Not even clicked on the email and nothing happened, right? Now you want to send another communication to your customer. You were confused or not sure which is the best channel you need to use. Again, sending in text messages or push notification. So what exactly system will you use? Use the optimized channel optimization. Uh, it's one of the uh, tab we have item here in the real time journey. You let system identify which is the best channel for a customer for your customer to communicate with either as a text text message or push notification. So that's our optimization of the journey which we recently used for a customer where we let system decide based on uh, past experience, based on machine learning uh, experience side, which channel customer prefer to use either as a text message or a push notification. So you can reach out uh, to, the, to the right channel to your customers. And stay tuned, I'm going to show you like, uh, this functionality in a few minutes. And then we have some of the new feature added here in the real time journey, which is something like asset library. We already have the asset library in the uh, outbound marketing, but this is more like a centralized library where you can upload your all the video uh, images and any kind of links and documents you want uh, to use in the uh, channels in, in a channel designing, let's say email design, push notification or a text message designing. You can use also upload with the tags actually. So tags in a sense you can tag a image. Uh, so when you it's very easy for you to search and it will identify that what different type of tags we have. It will also use uh, some of the functionality. So let's say when you're designing an um, email. So if I go to the next slide, if let's say I'm designing an email for this contour, so new new product, uh, new. Um, I would say headphone is launch, going to launch or wireless headphone is going to launch. System you can what you can use. Let system identify uh, from the library which is the right image for you. So it used the AI driven image suggestion functionality to give you suggestion of the image based on that uh, based on the recent tags and if information you enter when you upload the image. So let's say when you're designing a we are noticing that you left something in your cart related to this item and you want to use an image as a perspective for it this this content right then you can use the ai driven image suggestion and it will design it will look for a right image for you and then suggest an image for you so let's say 
when you have 10 images, it's fine. But when we have 100,000 images with different type of information, it's very hard to identify which one to use for for this designing out of email content, right? So you can uh, let system identify and give you suggestions. So it will just give you a couple of suggestions, and then you can let uh, choose one of the best possible to design a powerful email uh, for your customer. As I mentioned a few minutes before, it creates. Uh, you can also create a push notification as one of the channel apart from the email uh, for the real time journey, and you can design it. You can allow it will allow you to create a title, subtitle, message. You can see in the right side of the screen the preview of it, and also you can see uh, choose the behavior type of this push notification. You want to open this in the browser or within that app. And now you say. We don't have any my mobile application for it, where it will push to the customer. It will push to marketing application. No, because marketing application is for only for users like internal your organization. For customer, you can release your application like a, if you're an e-commerce company, you can design your own application uh, for your op, uh, for your e-commerce purchases uh, or your product purchases. Or let's say if you already have existing uh, application, you can add this, embed this functionality to the existing application. So you don't have to design the whole thing from scratch or release a new application for marketing, not push notification, right? It does not make any sense in a business scenario. So that's why you can use this functionality, existing one, to release an app. There is a proper method given on the how to release a or uh, add this push notification functionality to the new mobile application or to the existing one. So you can follow the uh, docs.microsoft.com um, information if you like. I can I can share those links with you, and you can then personalize uh, content with dynamic data um, as uh, as based on the let's say uh, with some information coming from the field of a contact or any other entity you like to I'd like to add. And we have very similar co concept of like push notification, the SMS, but this one it will go to. Uh, to the SMS or phone uh, phone number of the customers, which is contact, which we already have. It will also check whether we have a consent given by the customer on the sending a text SMS. So when it comes to phone number and text email and the push notification, it will check the uh, contact like a consent for the email and text. We already have the consent management, something called given on the screen calls consent center. So when you click on it, it will automatically import all the consent created within that contact list of your application. So what is mean by import? So it will what exactly it will do? Let's say in, if you open a contact in Dynamic 365, there is a consent management couple of fields added there. Uh, bulk email allow, do not allow, email allow, do not allow, this kind of thing, right? Phone number, calls, SMS, and all these. When you click on import, it will pull all this contact uh, related consent uh, uh, management fields data to consent center. So when, is, when you're running a journey, system first will check whether we have a consent to send this email or SMS to to the customer or Ashish um, as a customer as part of the journey or not, right? So it, that's something it's very powerful tool which we already have in the application. And we have real time triggers. This will uh, provide a very ex expense like, uh, extensibility to the application side. So you can use the trigger to start, continue or stop a journey. So Using an event or a trigger is not only to start a journey. You can use a trigger uh, uh, to to move to the next step from the journey. So let's say you design a journey where you're sending an email, and then you uh, from the next step moving to the let's say sending an SMS. You want the trigger to be used, whether they open an email or link, click on a link or something like that. It can be any kind of trigger you can design. That is another continue journey or to stop a journey. Also, you can use the trigger. Um, so it start from a start, continue and stop a journey of, uh, from the real time marketing. Now, what are the different type of triggers we have? So let's say we have triggers to create a contact, email open, contact created, email open, order place. These are the, some of the triggers, which let's say uh, you like to start a journey. When a contact is created, that's a start of a journey. Welcome a user. So because they are subscribed to a newsletter, right? Now you're sending an a thank you email to them. Now you say uh, when they open an email will be a trigger for follow up response in the journey, whether they 
a click on your promotion email or thank you email which is sent to the customer with discount, uh, let's say 5% discount on the next purchase. Now, once the order is placed, there is the exit criteria, exit criteria to terminate a journey. So it the system will not follow until the end of the journey, like even order is placed, it will keep sending email and different things. This is the end point. So you can define in the journey very clearly what is my exit criteria. And my exit criteria is this when an order is placed and when a let's say uh, when a record is created, when let's say work order is created, when anything created, uh, any type of record that will be a exit point you can define in the journey. That's that you can clearly define. Now, what are the different types of event triggers we have? We have at this point of time three type of trigger uh, event triggers: custom, interaction, and business. So, what is a custom trigger looks like? Uh, when uh, when you don't have any, uh, when you want to create a custom trigger, let's say flexible way of, uh, uh, how can I take an example? Let's say download a white paper, form is submitted, or connected to a vice fine network or abandoned card. These are the custom trigger, custom event triggers which you can define. It may be external or internal within that tool or external to the organization or any other third party tool you want to connect with or pull the data from. Now, when we have the interaction type of events, interaction type of event events represent the interaction with the journey. So let's say when they receive an email, text, text message, push notification, you can say interaction. Uh, you cannot you cannot start or end the journey with the interaction events, uh, with the interaction events or triggers, but you can use within the journey on the logical continuation or preceding next steps uh, within the journey. So take an example, when a journey send an email, a set of events, let's say email delivered, email bounced, email open, become available to the journey others, okay? And then it will allow make a next best possible or logical step, uh, next step within the journey of the interaction events. And the last we have the business events, which represent a creation of a record or uh, within that application, like customer's customer service or sales application. So let's say when a record, a contact is created, when an order is placed, when a case is created, something like that. These are the business event, which we usually call when a record created or updated within, within the tool. Uh, within the Dynamic 365 customer service or sales application. So with this, um, I will talk about and let's do a quick round of demo for a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to start from the journey side. So let's say when, when I talk about the marketing, in the marketing application, we have two uh, marketing. We have the outbound marketing and real-time marketing applications and then even planning and settings for, for those. In the outbound marketing, as I mentioned, we have customer is already there in both that side. We have segmentation, subscription list, customer journey, email marketing, social media post, and different other options we have, which we already talked about. If I talk about the email marketing, so email marketing, what you can do, I will just focus on the points which is uh, which is not covered by uh, everybody, and what's the difference in these two, which one to use in, in any given time. So you can obviously design a journey within that um, outbound marketing. That's something you can do. Now, when it comes to email designing, you can use the designing option of email. Right now, this is in the live state, so that's why I cannot make an edit. But when I click on edit, it will make in live editable mode. Now, there's a couple of things. When it comes to subscription list, you can use subscription list. You can use the manage the preference of your subscription list from your customers, uh, and you can trigger uh, uh, trigger a list of contact or subscription list member from the outbound marketing journey. And you can even manage and add the preference link within that email marketing uh, email marketing of this uh, email designing tool, which I mentioned. It's on the screen. There is a couple of things you need to remember. When you design an email in the outbound marketing, you cannot use that same email in the real time journey. This functionality is at this point of time is not present right now, but I'm pretty sure it will be available soon. We don't have any uh, as per I know. I don't think so. There is any roadmap plan because there is a two separate concept uh, given in here. There is no concept of subscription list in the real time marketing. So let's say if you add a subscription center, and you manage directly interacted with your subscription list here. So let's say when you're sending an email, when a user click on it, they can manage their subscription. And when based on the, they click on a link and manage the subscription, 
automatically the multiple list of subscription and their members and other thing will be automatically updated. So the subscription lit feature we don't have at this point of time in the real time marketing. So that's one of the reason and couple of more like reasons we have uh, why the email build in the outbound marketing does not work in the real time marketing. So that's one of the thing, uh, but I'm pretty sure it will be soon will be available. As I mentioned segment, yes, it will be used in both the applications so you can create a segment in outbound and you can use the segment within the real time marketing. That's 100% uh, possible right now. There's no feature like event management there. There's no feature like uh, uh, marketing form pages, lead, lead scoring model, and there is no point of putting the same feature in both the application, both the modules, right? Because there is no point of repeat features in uh, with the different perspective. Uh, but in the real time side, what we have, we have the segmentation, which you can define the different list of segmentation, dynamic or, or static segments here. You can also use, uh, as I mentioned, consent center here. Uh, so when I click on the consent center, you can pull the information from all the uh, different. Oops, I opened that. That's why. So when I click on the sub segmentation list, it will open it within that outbound marketing tool. You see, so that's a quick difference. You can view there. You can use it in the journey, but you cannot edit within that tool. It will just move the open within that tool because that's how UI right now is function. If I go to consent management, we have various consent given uh, from the random customers and you can load consent by clicking on it. You can it will load the latest consent configuration settings uh, and it will update the opt in opt out uh, for. For various contacts, you can only lo load the consent for emails or for the phone number for SMS. And also you can use this consent. What the type of consent we have when it comes to GDPR and other information which we follow uh, what the we have four five levels of the consent management. So which level of consent you like uh, your customer given to you, right? So you can they like to track use the tracking script even with, based on what information they are doing in, in the application side. Then we have the SMS which you can easily design a quick SMS here. It's given on the screen. You can use the number from Azure um, Azure Communication Services ACS or you can use uh, right now Azure ACS is in the preview or you can use from the Tableau that is uh, will work very perfectly with uh, with the with the real time journey. You can design you can see the report how many SMS send uh, update pushed or like fail and how many people clicked on the link and different the reports related to that SMS. Uh, it will take some time to load. OK, let's let's come back in a few minutes or you can design a push notification here so you can design enter your message here um, and it will automatically show you the preview in the right side of the screen. You can create a dynamic personalization. So let's say you want to use some uh, contact name or contact full name here and you can use which from which field it will come. So it will create a more target audience. Uh, you can choose and personalize content you can design. Uh, within that push notification. Now here it will have, as I mentioned, oh, we have the option now. Sorry. So we earlier it was like last month it was two. So we have first is the open in app, open in browser, and open in uh, open customer service survey. So customer voice survey was not given in uh, any in uh, recently. It was just just added. So here you can say, share or uh, push uh, like select your survey, and then when you click on it, it will open a survey directly. Similar type of feature we have in the text message. You can add a survey within the text message. So when I click on the link, it will open the survey uh, within the tool. So you don't have to copy the link from there and put it here. There is a inbuilt um, button to add a survey, customer voice survey within the text message. Now let's talk about customer journey before we wrap up the session. When I click on edit, I can select a segment based journey or edit, uh, event based journey. So how how can I do that? When I click on the new button, uh, so let's show you how those option looks like. Let's click on new journey, and there is a trigger based journey, which is event based journey, also called, and the segment based journey, which you can select a segment. Many places I I was using many time event based journey because earlier, couple of months back, it called as event. Now they renamed the event to trigger. So that's why it's event based instead of event based journey is trigger based journey. So many of the PowerPoint when you see it's still showing the event because that's uh, that's the same same name actually just the terminology difference they choose. 
And here you can choose your trigger. So let's say trigger is appointment created. Any contact or business record updated. Anything you want to create a third party application site. So let's say connect to your network or Wi-Fi or any other application. And based on the action there, you want to take the information and integrate the code. So when somebody connected to that network or system, automatically system will pull the information and uh, push it to the initiated journey. That's something you can define a trigger there. And then we have the event based journey, which I'm going to open it here. So give me a moment. Let's open a journey which I already created for the session. And if I click on edit, I can change the segment from here. I can use whether uh, it's a one time journey with static audience, as we know the difference of static and dynamic right now. I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of, I'm assuming. And then we can design whether one time journey with newly added audience uh, can start any anytime. So it means anything when we are when we are using a dynamic journey, it will not send the journey to everybody, it's just sent to the new audience and the repeat to all audience within after every uh, let's say 10 days or 20 days, something like that. Exclude a segment you can use. This functionality was not there in the uh, outbound marketing. So we have a uh, the people who, who can part of, let's say a thousand people can part of it, but of the thousand three hundred part of the journey, another journey called B, then they are excluded from that this this uh, customer journey, like whole uh, journey from the segmentation. You can define the start and end date of the journey if you want, and that's this is the start date start of the configuration. Now a couple of things here to remember. This provides a like real time journey provides the capability of goals so you can drive your own custom goals or you can do uh, define your own uh, goals. Let's say drive a purchase new sales generated engage customer on increased loyalty on board and new people something like that or you can define your own custom goals. So what is the meaning of a goal? So here the meaning of a goal when a goal met 80% then this means you are uh, you're completing this action. So this means you are in good shape and good size and uh, you you are expected to complete it by 80%. It can be percentage or numbers. So in this segment we have 69 people and you say <clears throat> out of 69 anything more than 50 per 55 people then I'm able to accomplish my goal. Uh, it's accomplished then uh, this out of 60 55 people uh, to complete this action. So something like a goal you can define um, in, in the journey and you can see this some templates already built for the goals. There is also an end trigger. So here the exit all uh, when the when the journey will complete it, when somebody exit and completed all the steps. This is something outbound marketing follow. And uh, this option is also available in this journey in the real time journey. But what's the alternate option? Alternate exit. When somebody, uh, your end goal is to, when the abandoned cart, they finish the purchase, and that fin per per finishing a purchase, uh, it's a trigger for you. When that trigger hit, then your journey is end for that customer because you don't want to send an email after reminder emails after the after they finish the purchase because that's a goal for you, right? So your when your goal is hit. And your uh, so you can define or your trigger is hit. You can uh, exit the journey for that customer or for that uh, contact uh, from the segment. Or you can seg uh, uh, or you can exit based on the people you can out uh, finish the journey. You can select them into a multiple segmentation from here. So these are the few criteria where we can start. We can set the goal and end the journey. Now here. I'm using a segment as I mentioned here. That's a te Texas and uh, Washington uh, contacts. I'm using A and B testing within the journey. So A and B testing, as we, as we know, it provides a temp to template to various uh, two similar. Um, um, how we can I say uh, two similar templates of a two emails or any type of record or uh, record in a sense like a channel which we are planning to contact and then we want to compare which one is more successful based on based on our success criteria which we want to mention in a and b testing so here our success winning ratio our success criteria here for the a and b testing is open rate uh, uh is the open rate so the more number of open rates then you can uh, it will select the uh, the number of um, uh, version of the template like version a or version b and i'm using two separate templates here so now here I'm just given a name A and B test one, and I select two separate templates. 
in the outbound marketing, you have A and B testing. That's perfectly worked uh, pretty good, but it will not use within that journey. It will use just a bit outside the journey. So you cannot see the whole picture of that uh, different templates. Uh, it's coming in the, in the view. Now here, based on some trigger, I can define uh, this is the condition. When I'm sending an email, I'm checking when a user click on the link, which link a button which I given for let's say to finish the purchase and then day limit is one day, then I will go and send an SMS to them if they click on the button. And then again in the SMS, I'm using A and B testing to make sure that I'm using the click the rate uh, for, for the SMS or any other option which I like to say based on the journey goals. And then it will choose one of the possible template and send the SMS to the contact. If let's say I've, if they have not clicked on the link uh, or, or button given on the email, then I'm using a channel optimization way. I'm not sure whether I send a text SMS or a push notification in any combination. So you can, we have a three channel right now. So let's say if I delete, uh, replace with push notification, we have email, push notification and text message. So you can use any either two of three options to use in the channel optimization. So system will identify, compare, Ashish like to receive push notification more than SMS, so it will send a push notification automatically than an SMS. For another other user, they prefer to use receive text SMS, so it will for them it will send a text SMS, something like that. Correct. So these are the some. It's called channel optimization. It will use the a couple of ways to optimize it, and then again you send an SMS and different things. When I click on it, you have three channels and action you can choose: uh, SMS, email, and push notification. And you have a branching option. You have a branch based on a specific attribute, uh, A and B testing, uh, the uh, channel optimization, hold for a specific time like a wait timer, or you can customize a trigger using a scalable, as I mentioned like in my slide. Scalability provides the scalability, so you can use the Power Automate flow to extend the capability using custom triggers. So let's say you want to send some trigger to a third-party channel. In the output marketing, you can use the custom channel, but here we can use the cust power automate uh, templates or triggers uh, to to send a notification or to do the integration with any third party application. So these are some of the ways, and then we have the analytics given here, and here is the list of triggers you can define in the in the real time journey in the real time marketing. As we go five more minutes left, so I'm going to go back to my presentation, um, and let's talk about which is right for your business, like which uh, which application side. If you're new to Dynamic 365, and if your goal is to just collect lead and contact, then you can use the real-time uh, outbound marketing together with real-time marketing journey uh, in both the application. This, this approach will be based on what your current situation are, so which is based on the current need you have. If you're a Dynamic 365 marketing customer, and you want to capture lead capture scoring, grading, and seamless handoff to to the sales application. That's your end goal or main like key goal is or key goals are. Um, you can use the outbound marketing at this point of time. If you are a uh, dynamic this for customer and it, at this point of time you're using it today, and your end goal is to unlock experience using dynamic uh, outbound marketing for the customer journey, you can use the existing customer journey will continue to be supported. So there is no, um, I'm not saying anything like it will uh, retire or something like that, remove from the application. Both the journey has their own uh, pros and cons and when it comes to application side and uh, provides a different capability of the feature. Now let's talk about what is coming up. Uh, we talked about different things. Activity creation from journey. When you're sending an email or sending an SMS, the system right now creates an activity for a contact no, it does not. So that's why it's one of the features that's coming up, and uh, we got a we got a planned roadmap for this. It's coming very soon. I don't have the date at this point of time, but it's, it will come very soon. So when a, when you're sending an email or SMS from the journey, you can create a SMS record or a email record, but it takes a significant amount of customization. But with this, this feature is coming up very soon. So you can see a list of all the activities created for a contact. Uh, within the contact uh, timelines. Right now it creates an insight because it will use the marketing services to send email and then it will generate an insight and hold the information only in the marketing insight services. It will not push the data to the marketing for 
for the uh, end to end connection. Now next is the real time journey branching based on SMS response. At this point of time, real time uh, journey uh, in the marketing, it's just a outbound. It's not an inbound. So when you send an SMS, you can just send an SMS to customer. Only thing it's inbound is stop. When they send response as stop STOP, then it will remove and opt out from that list. That's a Tivilio functionality. But we are planning, like Microsoft is planning, a product team is planning to launch soon uh, based on the responses. So let's say customers say, uh, send uh, when you when you send an option, uh, when you send an SMS, choose uh, number one, two, three, and when they respond, it will choose the next action. So many times when you are having an interaction with telecom companies for various product and service, they like to interact with SMSs, right? So those are the options uh, which is coming in, in very soon. So it will branch a journey based on the SMS response. And next is custom channel for real time journey. We don't have um, any, as I mentioned, custom channel, but you can use pretty much everything um, for all the functionality is using the power automate, but still some of the things like connection to social media and other channel still is missing. It can be done. I'm not saying it cannot be done, but it takes significant amount of customization. Uh, but these are the, some of the features coming up and which gives a pretty much pretty much uh, very, very extensible capability and scalable uh, to the company who are planning to use marketing application and focused on the real time marketing side. And there's a couple more small features coming up, so that's why I put many more. And with this, I would like to open a floor for Q&A. Looks like we got just two more minutes left. Thank you, Ashish. Canada 365 guys. So Ashish, um, what you've done is you've actually expanded upon um, the previous session and you've gone into the further more advanced features of Dynamics for Marketing, especially the newer features, which a lot of people haven't started using yet, as well as some of the newer announcements. So thank you so much for that, Tashish. I think that's exactly what the community needed to understand. And uh, let's see if there's any questions. Um, I can't see any questions yet. I think it's been a learning experience because a lot of what you've covered today, Ashish, um, mm -hmm. is actually a lot of the newer features. Um, would you agree? Yeah, makes sense. Actually, that's one of the reason I, I would like to talk about and I implemented a lot of marketing application recently for the real time side. Uh, so I would like to share my experience. And if you'd like to know more about if you have any question concern, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, let me see if I can put I'm, I'm going to put my LinkedIn on the chat so you can reach out to me and ask me a question and I, I will share my email if needed. Fantastic. Yes, please do in the chat. That'd be helpful. So there is one question. Um, uh, Shami Mohammed is asking, do marketing emails show on the timeline of customer? Uh, right now, no. As I mentioned, that's a coming up feature. When you send a marketing, so when it comes to marketing emails, I'm considering it's coming and sending from the journey, right? If it's from the journey, then it will not show right now in timelines, but soon it will, it will actually, that's upcoming feature. Thank you so much, Ashish. So if you can remember to share your contact details in the chat, uh, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, so once again, thank you, Ashish, for joining us all the way from Canada. Always look forward to your sessions. You always great uh, deliver great, valuable sessions. Um, so once again, thank you so much. No problem, Raz, and thank you, buddy, for having me here. Thank you, Ashish. Well, there you go, guys. So make sure. You